Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is take two of this. I recorded the entire thing and it didn't record. Yay me. So I'm going to make a holiday reveal wheel today and I've got the scallop circle that you cut out using the dies from Lawn Fawn and I've also got the template that they've made for each of the different shapes that you can add and make into the reveal wheel. So I'm just temporarily taping that to the scallop circle that we're going to stamp on. And then I'm going to take some Distress Oxide in Cracked Pistachio um, and I'm going to use the Lawn Fawn Reveal Wheel Holiday Sentiments or Winter Sentiments, no Holiday Sentiments because there's some Halloween and other holidays in there as well. And I just picked some words that I thought, uh, some sentiments that I thought would work well within the shape that I'm using. So I'm using this sort of oval shape um, that cut out and um, I'm just going turning the card and lining them up as best I can so that they look like they're in the right spot within that oval. So very easy to do really especially with the templates now when before they had the templates it was a little trickier but you could still do it so it wasn't so bad. Um, and that's me just trying to show you that you can move that around. And so in the reveal wheel you get this panel, this die that you cut out, one that won't have the opening and one that you add in this little extra die to create that opening. There's also this little circle that you then put at the back of the scallop circle and put a brad through it and that is what will create the, the movement of the reveal wheel. So in order to get that to move and so that it's not uh, so it's got space to move. I'm going to add some foam adhesive and I'm going to use the same depth of foam adhesive through the whole card just so that everything levels up nicely. And I've just got three on there and you can use four if four fit but what you don't want it to do is to touch the brad and you don't want it to go over that edge of that little circle. And then, then using the template that's already on there to line up with the opening I've created on my pattern paper and I'm going to then stick that to the base piece which doesn't have the opening in it. If you happen to cut it out with the opening in it, it doesn't matter, you're not going to see it so it's not the end of the world but you don't need to cut that out out of both of those pieces, just the one needs it. And then I've just taken the template off, obviously don't forget to take your template off um, and there's the mechanism all ready to go. So in order to get, because we've got foam on the back of that mechanism, we need the whole thing to be level. So again, I'm using the same foam and the same depth of foam to create, uh, to stick the front piece on. And yes, I add a lot of foam because I have this fear that my stuff's going to fall apart. So I add a million of them. Um, but it also helps to stabilize things. So if it's... Um, you know, if maybe your pattern paper, if you're using a pattern paper that is maybe a little flimsier, this helps to sort of keep it as level as possible. Um, the pattern paper I've used is actually from um, a Lawn Fawn 6x6 pad from quite a few years ago, I believe. Um, and I think it's called Knit Picky or something, <laughs> something like that. Um, but it's all like knitted patterns, but I thought this was really pretty. So, um, and this has got some of the colours in here are actually going to be the colours that I'll use in the colouring portion of the video. Um, which is also why I chose the Cracked Pistachio because it works really well with this. I love aqua sort of colours and red together for Christmas. I love it. So um, there's also these additional little um, decorative elements that you can put on depending on the shape that you've got. So this is the oval one. It's almost like a little frame that goes around it. Um, and like I say, Lawn Fawn have come out with loads of different ones for different seasons. So now I'm using the Jar of Love stamps um, from Stampin' Up and some Ink on 3 ink. And the reason I'm using this ink is because it's a Copic friendly or alcohol friendly um, ink. So I can use my alcohol markers with it um, and it won't blur or try and blend with itself. <laughs> Um, and it keeps things really nice and sharp. Um, and I also have the dies that go with this um, Jar of Love set. Um, if you've seen my Halloween and the sort of everyday one on Tuesday, 
um, you'll see that they all the dies work for across quite a few of these stamp sets so they all coordinate they're a nice set to have had so if you do still have this or you have you know have had it for many years this is just another idea um, of what to do with old product because I think sometimes we buy all these things and then you know they're, they're great at the time but then you don't want to get rid of them and you've spent all this money on them so you don't want to you know you need more ideas to use the, on how to use those things so this is what I'm trying to do this week so hopefully it's been helpful and I decided that for the jars I wanted the um, the candle and these the baubles with the foliage I think if you did this in real life this would be amazing you can even add like twinkly lights in it and it'd be so pretty as like a centerpiece on your table something like that and then the snowman I could now myself I had to put the snowman in so he's in the, the middle one so uh, in the little jar sorry so I took for the coloring I just chose two a darker and a lighter color so if you need to know the colors are on the screen there um, but it's basically a darker and a lighter shade so that I could then blend between those two colors they're very small images it's not you know it, there's not a lot of blending as such but I know it's there so it helps and I always go from darkest to lightest so I'll start with my dark color and then I will drag the lighter color into the dark color and blend in the middle um, some areas are so small like the the berries here that I didn't bother with the blending because I didn't see the point um, you can do that if you want to but <laughs> it's a very tiny area and I I picked colors out of the pattern paper so there's reds there's some green there's um, aqua sort of colors and then obviously I do have a, a darker or sort of a more rich yellow that I used for the candle the actual flame um, of the candle and also for I just then used one of those colors the darker of the two for the nose the carrot nose so although it's not an orange I didn't want to bring another color into it I wanted to keep the colors quite sort of uniform across the whole the whole project um, and that way it also helps to keep everything cohesive I think <laughs> so so I'm just going through all the um, you know coloring in all the baubles and that in here and then I will also bring in I will bring in BG10 which is a very pale almost almost frosty looking color um, it is a blue but it I think for glass or snow it's a it's a really good color to use um, so I also use it on the candle here in a minute just so it looks like it's a white candle so you could use a very pale gray um, and if you use a cool gray you'd get more of a cold look and if you use a warm gray you'd get more of a, a warm look <laughs> I know that's kind of obvious in the name but um, it, it will make a difference depending on what you're using it for so if you're using it say your warm grays on bears or something like that that just gives them a, a sort of cozier look um, and it as opposed to using maybe a cooler gray on things like ice um, but I like this blue for the for that sort of glass kind of look I think a lot of glass that clear glass has that sort of slightly blue tint so that's what made it work for me <laughs> and then go through and just coloring in things like his scarf um, I am doing a bit of blending on that because there's enough for me there was enough space to do that um, and again it's just a darker and a lighter shade of whatever you've got so if you've only got because things like Copic are so expensive so you have to build up your stash kind of slowly um, which I have done but even if you've got half a dozen colors like this and you can still you know you can still make it work um, having just one darker and one lighter so that's it <laughs> for the coloring anyway <laughs> so now I wanted to put these onto the front of the reveal wheel and I'm going to pop them up on some foam tape um, and same I'm using the exact same I'm actually actually oh, can't talk I'm actually using Stampin' Up's uh, dimensionals um, they're just a good foam dot thing and so I've got one layer on these large jars that I'm going to stick to the front of the um, reveal wheel which by the way you can just use the back you can use this as your card um, 
because the back is just white um, in this instance um, and you can use this as your card I'm going to stick it to a card base but you could easily just use it as your whole card and then for the center for the little um, jar I needed to not only add some adhesive in the middle there so that was an easier way to do that instead of trying to line it up on him um, and also I wanted it to still look like he was he was away or sort of there was a depth from the other two so I added another layer of um, foam so there's the the two layers of foam in the center to raise him and then to level him I've added an, just one layer to him because he's already on top of the other two large jars which have a layer of foam if that made any sense but anyway and then I have a white card base here and I'm just going to stick this flat to this card and I just kind of measured enough so it had some a bit of a border around the reveal wheel um it just it was just the size that worked um so sometimes i just measure the actual thing that i'm trying to stick to something and that way and if i and then kind of work out what border i want around it but that's pretty much it the thing that i didn't die cut there is a little arrow that you can die cut within the reveal wheel the main reveal wheel dies which is what these are um you do get a little arrow to show people what to do with it and so I didn't die cut it I just decided to use a black fine liner um, I figured the black ties in with the stamped images and um, I decided to put my arrow going down so that when you're actually turning the wheel the words I don't know for me the word I would be reading the words the right way <laughs> that makes sense but really you can turn it either way it makes no difference so I hope you like this and I hope you've enjoyed this week's videos with sort of learning about bringing out new you know old product and making new things with them but i will see you in the next one guys bye